like to see featured on Book TV? Send us an email to booktv at cspan.org, tweet us at booktv, or post on our wall, facebook.com slash booktv. You're watching Book TV on C-SPAN 2. This weekend, we're visiting Tulsa, Oklahoma, with the help of our local cable partner, Cox Communications. Next, we visit Professor Najwa Rauda of Oklahoma State University, Tulsa, author of The Feminine Voice of Islam, which looks at the challenges that come with being a Muslim woman in the United States. Muslims in America are in the millions, and um, we, we don't know much about Muslim, let alone Muslim women. So this is a segment of society that we really want to understand because they are misunderstood. The media or what we know about Muslim women is what we know with a veil or, you know, oppressed or in black thing. But when you come to know their stories from their voices, it's a different story. I could only choose 10 uh, Muslim women and they were uh, Jordan, Lebanon, Syria, Egypt, India, Cyprus, uh, Iraq and uh, uh, Iran. Iran is the one that is very important. Uh, the one from Iran, for example, would have never thought that she would come to America. She was, uh, she was uh, studying here, then got married to an American. It was interesting that before she got married, she asked him to become a Muslim himself, which he did. But all her life, she wanted a connection with God. But because she is a Muslim, the, the book, uh, the Quran, is in Arabic, and she didn't know Arabic. So her grandmother would keep on telling her, if you love God, you have to talk to him in, in Arabic. In English. So you have to study Arabic. And she failed all the time. So she told me, if I came to America, I still want the, the spiritual connection with God. So she started going to church. And then she changed now to become a Christian. And she now is, is an elder. And she would tell me, I found a voice. Now I can speak to him in English. <laughs> so you know something? This is, this is a, America has freed her. America has opened the door for her. This would have never have, have happened were she to be in Iran. So this is, this is a new freedom. We don't think that Muslim women have feminism, which they do have feminism, which is different, different because it is cultural and the objective are different from our understanding in Western uh, feminism. So it's very interesting, their stories. The one, as I was telling you about from uh, United Arab Emirates, a student, very, very bright. She won a scholarship to OSU and to finish her master's degree. She came here and uh, she wore the, the hijab, she wore the veil. And uh, she came from a very educated family, Harvard, uh, Oxford, everybody in her family highly educated. And when I told her, well, now you have finished your master's degree, why don't you just a couple of years and finish your doctor's degree? She said, no, no, it's time for me to go home and trust my parents to arrange marriage. This is time for me to get married, start a family, and then I'll come back and finish my, my uh, doctor's degree. Very amazing, the trust of, of um, arranged marriages, because in that society, people don't socialize men and women. They don't go out, they don't live together, they, don't, they, they are not supposed to. So they have total trust for their families to choose somebody who really fits in the family, who really is very much like her and is accepted. And they, the, the, she was telling me that both of them, when they are chosen, the, the groom and the bride, will have to make the, 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 the marriage work because it has been at the, the decision of the families and they have done a good job. So it's very interesting. The misconception and the misunderstanding is that women are oppressed and it is us in the West that have to free them and help them get their freedom. It's not so. So many of my participants have chosen to put the veil. I and mean, it was interesting, the, the lady from Damascus has never wore a veil in Damascus. No, none of her family uh, women would wear a veil. She came to America and her husband didn't ask her to do this. He, he was just just a, a guy who is Muslim, brought up from Syria. And then uh, when her kids became 14 years old or something, she wore a veil. She chose to. And it was interesting how she explained it to me. She said, I go out now, you know, I don't want people just to be attracted to my beauty or look at me as an object. I go home and my kids are quieter than before. 
They know that I have a structure with prayers, I have a culture to keep, and then I'm, I'm sort of religious. So she said, even my husband became quiet. He's now talking to a religious woman. He cannot curse, he cannot come drunk. <laughs> and she said that I have bought peace in the house. And uh, that if, if she's happy with that, she's happy with that. So, very interesting. The veil has been a, an issue from the time of the colonization. We had the veil dealt with the French in, in Algeria. We have them. It's, it's, it's something that they, they believed, they wanted the whole world to believe that it's a sign of oppression. It's a sign of, of uh, uh, having women. It is not so. It, it may be so in some, some uh, societies, but not all over the world. We see them in Canada. We see them in Pakistan. These people are choosing the veil as, as sometimes as a statement, sometimes as, a, as an identity. Sometimes because, like, I want to have peace. Sometimes because they don't want to objectify themselves. I'm, I'm not the beauty that you want. I want to deal with you. I am just respect me for uh, as a coworker or a student, etc. Not as the beautiful one. So, of course, there are there's a whole bunch of people who are, are imposed on them, but they are very new. It's something like two percent. Which, and when, when we see them in Europe, the people who wear the whole thing, the burqa. That's just two percent of the society, but that's what we listen to the news. This is what we see. We have also the negative thing about veil because it becomes a associated with Islam, and now when you when you listen to the news, we have all this problem with Islam in the world, whether it's in Libya, in Iraq, and now with the, with ISIS, with the Nasra, with all over the world. So we start saying, but this is this is something that we need to deal with, and you know, try to liberate them from. When I, when I talk about this, uh, this, this book, when, when I started doing it, my intention was to bridge this gap of fear and ignorance. Once you know their stories, you, you feel that they are like you, like anybody else. They have the aspiration for their kids, they have a success, etc. And when I really worked on this, this, I believe in women's power. They can communicate, they have the love, they have the understanding. I believe that they are the, 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 at the core of the family and the society and the world. So strengthening the woman, understanding, hearing their voices, hearing their stories, you, it will give you an opportunity to feel that they are like you and not fear them. If you fear them, you'll treat them as them versus us, which is very, very wrong. That's what happened in Europe, and they're paying for that now. So they isolate them. You cannot isolate them. On the contrary, you have to do your best to integrate them. So when I, when I finished writing the, the, the interviews, my... my uh, Professor asked me, my advisor asked me to give me a solution. I said, okay, the thing is that I propose a curriculum written for women, by women, to teach women and help them in, 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 in betterment. Because they, they do have uh, the intention to become better in society. And once they are in the society, they are part of it, and they call it home. It's your home as much as it is my home. So this is my curriculum that I, I have proposed. Um, unfortunately, I never had the time to uh, start on the curriculum, but I think it will be very much worth it. Uh, it will be a curriculum that educates women and help them with all aspects of inter being integrated in a Western society. For more information on Book TV's recent visit to Tulsa, Oklahoma, and the many other cities visited by our local content vehicles, go to cspan.org slash local content. Book TV continues now with...